So good afternoon. It's time to start our debate this hour. So should we listen to insulate Britain? They've been causing havoc on our roads over the last few weeks, but there's been some respite for motorists in the last couple of days. The group announced it will suspend its campaign as civil resistance until the 25th of October. That's because of the COP26 climate summit. But what actually does the group want and should we be listening to it? I'm joined now in the studio by Tim Goff, who is an Insulate Britain spokesperson. And down the line, we have senior lecturer in sustainable construction and climate change from Sheffield Hallam University, John Grant. Right, so I'm going to start um, asking you, uh, what, what is, what is insulation, Insulate Britain all about? Well, our demands are very simple. It is that we want uh, the homes of Britain to be insulated properly uh, within the next 10, 10, 10 years, by 2030, 2031. Can, can and we you, want the government to fund that. Yeah. Now, I want to ask you, though, Tim, and, and I know that your, um, your, your other spokesperson does get a lot of slack for this, but I'm going to ask you if you've insulated your own home first. Have you? I have, but admittedly not to an adequate standard. It's very difficult to bring homes up to a properly adequate standard of insulation. Mm. And I'm wondering, I thought that the government did have some sort of schemes in place anyway to get people insulating their homes. Is that not the case? I think they do have some, but the scale of them is so minuscule compared to the 29 million houses we have in this country that they're really making no difference at all. So with that in mind, what was the justification then for blocking roads? How is that going to um, get people to insulate or the government to insulate homes? Well, we think by bringing this to the attention of the, of the British public by these concrete actions that we've taken, this will then hopefully hopefully, force the government to take this matter seriously and themselves take some concrete action on this matter. So um, I'm going to ask John uh, this then. John, how reasonable are their demands? Well, uh, if we are going to attempt to reach uh, zero carbon anywhere near um, a, a date that, that will make a difference, that, then, then, you know, this, this, this situation where we have such poor standards that are legal, that, that our housing industry has been built to, but, but, but are, are well below what, what, what is a standard for, but for a healthy and, and a reasonable cost to, to heat your your homes it's it's now getting extraordinarily expensive uh, to keep some to keep it you know to, to keep your home warm and this is this has been an ongoing campaign you know we, we've seen the building regulations to just not not raise this it, sorry if people are not not aware of this so there are rules of a minimum standard mm. that, that you can build your houses and we we're well aware of it with regards to the fire and how substandard those were with Grenville. And, and, and even though it's not as obvious with, with a, a, an awful situation of a, of a tower fire like Grenville, there are literally thousands of people dying every winter because of substandard housing. And, you know, I, I, I can't deny that, you know, I, I sometimes get, get quite frustrated writing to my politicians and talking to, my, to, to people that might be able to listen to, to try and change the rules perhaps to the standard that was being proposed in 2015 so six years ago there was a standard proposed but this current government sort of squashed that saying that it, it might be too expensive and not thinking about the uh, somewhere in the region of 20 to 30 thousand people that die every winter due to substandard homes and and you know that that very rarely gets brought to the fore and that's primarily because those people that are dying um are older poorer um at lower income and they don't have a voice so and, you're and, saying you know, so, uh, so, so from, if i was to surmise what you're saying then in sense you are supporting insulate britain in their in their tactics and and their objective Would well I, I i support that some that something needs to be done that i i, I struggle with the thousands of lives lost, that, that's that, that's 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 you know that's a fact. That's a, it's not my opinion, and and yeah. something needs to be done. And the media, up until recently, no matter what I say, because I'm just this normal sort of lecturer, nobody listens to me. And and I wish there was another way that you could raise the media profile. You know, would would me standing with a flag saying yes, we need to save older people and poor people's lives. Would, would, would nobody would listen to that. So, so, Tim, do you think that this is working, then, your, your whole campaign to try and uh, get people to, to do something about the whole issue of home insulation? 
Uh, well, it's worked in the sense of it's brought the matter to the attention of the British public. It hasn't worked. It definitely hasn't worked yet because we haven't got the commitment from the government to do this very important investment in the future of our country. Uh, and unless we have concrete action, not just policies and words, uh, then basically we failed, haven't we? Well, I mean, look, it's a, it's a tough one. Um, the other day on Patrick's show, so on to the point, uh, we suggested that actually you, perhaps you should go to somewhere like China, which we could crowdfund you to go there, and you could perhaps approach those people because they have the highest sort of carbon footprint and they are causing a real issue. Does that sound like an option that you'd consider? I don't think the Chinese are going to take very much account of me, to be honest. Um, obviously, we live in the UK. We think the UK is the place to, for us to take action because it's our country and we believe in the future of the UK. So... But our, about, but our impact is minuscule in comparison to the rest of the world. Let's bring in the panel anyway. Mm. And uh, let's see what uh, Leo and Calvin have to add to this. Who wants to go first? Yeah. Go on, Leo. <laughs> All right, yeah, Tim, I mean, I've, I've got to say, I mean, uh, insulate Britain is just, is just the epitome of green policy because your uh, actions, you're blocking, blocking motorways, stopping, you know, plumbers, electricians getting to work. Uh, the burden's falling on the poorest in society rather than uh, the richest. You're not, you're not blocking uh, private jets or, or anything like that that would, that would affect the people who are really using you know, a, lot of, a lot of carbon. Uh, you're also you're, you're blocking ambulances, somebody who's left with life-changing injuries when they couldn't get to hospital after a stroke. I mean, I think you've, uh, you've definitely raised the profile of your issue, but you've, you've made us all think uh, that it's, it's idiotic. And, uh, and I now associate loft insulation with, uh, with idiotic actions. And uh, to be honest, I mean, you've seen how fuel prices are going up, which is actually a result of the government's green policy, uh, because they've, they've overinvested in, in wind farms and, and left um, uh, not enough capacity in, in fossil fuels and nuclear. Um, so we just need to let the market deal with this. If, if fuel prices are going up, people are going to invest in their own insulation. You don't need to be, you know, twisting people's arms or ruining people's, people's days and jobs to, to, to do this. And uh, I mean, where did you get the, get the, the wherewithal to, to even, uh, you know, think that this is something that everybody should do? I, I don't think people should chew with their mouth open. I wouldn't throw myself under a bus on the M25 to, to stop them, though. Uh, I think this is a little bit more serious than people eating with their mouths open. Well, you don't um, know how much it bothers me. <laughs> right, okay. It is a terrible thing. <laughs> it oh, is yeah. a terribly it's rude disgusting. thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what we're talking about here is, is, is people's lives. You know, we're talking about uh, tens of thousands in the UK. Uh, and if we look at what the climate scientists are telling us uh, in their published papers over the last two years, we're talking Which about ones? literally hundreds of millions of people dying uh, within the next... 15 to 20 years, unless action is taken by but everyone in the world, not just the UK, obviously. That just world. sounds like alarmist claptrap that I've heard since, since I was a child. We've, we've heard about, you know, the end of the world is nigh. It used to be that the people saying the end of the world is nigh were the, the, the crazy guys with the sandwich boards still are. Down, down the high street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Calvin Calvin says they still are. What, what have you got to yeah. say? Look, I think Calvin. you said that your campaign has worked because you've got a lot of attention from it, but I don't think that's the, the success criteria because you have, what you haven't got is the sympathy of the British public. And I don't think you have... Our, our agreement that we want to, these demands to be met. Who said that we want all homes insulated by the government within the next 10 years? First of all, what does by the government mean? The government doesn't have any funding. You're talking about me. You're talking about why do you want me to pay for your insulation? First, that's my question. Why should I pay for your insulation? Um, it's a question of everybody paying for everybody's insulation or the government taking action to invest in the future of this country. It's a business investment with a very, very clear payback. I think it's that's not one that I want to do. So who are you to demand that? But, but what, we're talk what we're talking about here is if you invest in insulation, you actually get the money back from the investment by virtue of saving money and health improvements. So this is not like investing in roads that make things worse. This has actually got a payback in it. So this is, this is over time, not a cost, but an actual saving and a saving for the poorest as, uh, as well. So, you know, your point of, you know, this is, this is impinging on the poorest is true, that they're the ones that drive, but they're the ones, the very poorest are the ones that are struggling and dying in the coldest and, and poorly insulated houses across the UK. So, you know, this payback situation, we did have a programme where the, 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 you paid back the insulation or the whatever improvement cost by the savings you made. But it was so awfully done that with, with such a high interest rate, 
that nobody did it, but but that still exists as a potential if, if, if it was put together properly. So there is that opportunity for making money, saving poorer people their lives, and especially in this world of more expensive fuel. Well, listen, what John's just John... done there is he's just articulated the argument much better than Insulate Britain have done in the last two months. Well, listen, John, thank you so much for articulating that. Also, Tim, for joining yeah, us and coming you. to the studio uh, live. Uh, stay with me. We are discussing so much more after the break. Quick fire debates. It's the part of the show where I put my panel under pressure to discuss some of the other stories of the day. But.